Tell us just how you think media freedoms will evolve now under this national security legislation. Thank you um, for asking about that. You know, it's been almost two weeks uh, since uh, the new law has been um, implemented, and, uh, and we still don't know. We're still waiting for the details of what might be happening. Um, but what we do know, um, that there are these four new criminal offenses um, that have been created in, for succession, subversion, uh, terrorism, uh, collusion with foreign um, uh, entities, and that um, will still play out. Um, but we do know that this will have uh, major implications for press freedom in Hong Kong um, because of its stated aims of what journalists can cover, um, who they can talk to, and how it might uh, play out in terms of national security issues. And of course, the primary goal is to put some kind of controls over the pro-democracy uh, marches um, and on the elections. But of course, the media is caught up in that. And then, of course, there will be impact for foreign media as well. And Article 27 of the Basic Law is where we find that press freedoms are enshrined uh, in the committee constitution here in Hong Kong. How do you see that squaring with this new legislation? And it, do you think that Hong Kong is eventually going to just turn into more of the mainland model, or could it actually be a hybrid where some sort of censorship is, is now policed selectively? Well, I think um, we just have to wait and see, because the law is written almost implies uh, that there will be some kind of hybrid. Um, there is Article of, of 4 of the new law that says that they will respect uh, human rights, they will ex uh, respect uh, the basic law. But in the end, um, when push comes to shove, uh, certainly um, they said that the new law will supersede um, any existing Hong Kong law. But I think there is this hope. Um, that as these cases come out, that we'll get more clarity as to what might be happening. And certainly there's the hope that Hong Kong courts, which have a strong reputation for independence, um, will continue to do so. In other words, not necessarily um, restrict in how they try to uphold rule of law and certainly the common law and basic law principles, um, but will try to in incorporate and embrace those um, and not necessarily wait until China gives some kind of direction. Uh, Doreen, you've said before that courageous local journalists are key to moving ahead. There is a fine line between courageous and putting yourself at risk of being sent behind bars. How do you suggest journalists navigate this tricky environment? Well, I think they have to continue doing what they're going to do, right? Um, in other words, journalists have shown over the years, uh, both um, the local Hong Kong journalists and foreign journalists who operate there as well, um, that despite any kind of repercussions, they continue to do their reporting. Um, certainly, we've seen in the last year, there's been a lot of conflicts with the way police have been handling um, violence against journalists, um, and they've been able to um, persevere around that. So I think until we know more details, they have to continue, and I do believe they will. Um, and I think they have shown that they will continue to report vigorously about what is happening in Hong Kong and then wait to see what kind of prosecutions might come out, if they do come out at all, um, that might give them some boundaries and some of those more firmer red lines in which they know that they can't go across. But I think that they will continue, as they have shown in their coverage of the elections um, in the last two days. Um, I think you have not seen them pulling back from that type of coverage. In your view, what constitutes collusion with foreign forces to endanger national security? I'm just wondering if it is okay, for instance, for us to report that the U.S. is criticizing Beijing's uh, government for impingement of freedom, for instance. Well, see, that's the big question. That's the question we don't know how it's defined. Um, certainly, um, uh, there are some indications that collusion could be in the publication of or providing support or publication. But one of the things that you have to look at is um, whether someone talks to a foreign journalist, how foreign journalists are covering these particular stories. Um, certainly, um, that's the questions that the foreign media will have to raise. But I think the big issue and concern is not so much of, of, of this, which, of course, we'll know more um, when there are further cases that have worked their way through the courts, and certainly with cases that are brought. Um, but I think in terms of how um, it kind of pushes a different agenda, 
Um, so collusion with foreign forces is also a message to uh, those outside of Hong Kong about what to report about, what to write about, what kind of aid to give. And certainly that's beginning to have repercussions around the world. And Doreen, what do you think the response from the yes. media companies are going to be? We've already seen the target has been on RTHK, which is, uh, of course, a public broadcaster yes. here in the city, TVB dropping some of its yes. programming. Is that just the canary in the coal mine right now? How can the news industry better prepare themselves? Well, I think a uh, special circumstance with RTHK as a public broadcaster, um, it has always kind of, you know, towed the line in terms of um, being very vigorous in coverage, getting a pushback from the Hong Kong government, yet they continue to do some really good reporting. Certainly now um, there is that type of control. And then with TVB, of course, we've seen what's happened to them, as you mentioned. But I, I do think that um, there will continue to be um, very vigorous and aggressive uh, journalism and reporting until they know what these boundaries are. Um, because otherwise, what you have is a situation for self-censorship. And certainly there might be some self-censorship um, in the days and weeks to come. Um, but because things are so undefined, um, as you mentioned, what is collusion? Uh, what is a state secret? Uh, one of the provisions of the law says that you cannot provide state secrets to foreign entities. Well, what is a state secret? We know certainly in China it's not defined. State secrets have been known to be anything from financial data, a school exam results, um, things that are already publicly available on the Internet and elsewhere. Um, so I think um, because there is this uncertainty about it, um, journalists have to kind of move forward and continue to report. You know, and, and they already have some experience. I mean, there is Hong Kong reporters in China already. There are foreign um, media in China already. And they have they've been working under the parameters of that stricter environment, yet they're still doing um, some vigorous reporting there as well.